The Wisconsin State Supreme Court says they will revisit absentee voting laws ahead of the November election. And Assembly Speaker Robin Voss avoids an impeachment attempt. CBS of Days Emily Fan and WIS Politics editor J.R. Ross discuss that and more in tonight's Capital Connection. We begin this week looking back on Tuesday, which is expected to be the Senate's last day on the floor. We're going to highlight some of the bills that they acted on and others that didn't happen that still made some headlines. They voted on one that was pretty controversial that would ban transgender athletes from competing in women's sports, a bill that Governor Evers has vowed to veto. They also took up a constitutional amendment that would ban governors from uh, having sole authority over spending federal funds. Of course, this came out of the COVID pandemic when Evers got a lot of of money from the federal government and he didn't have to get any approval from lawmakers on how to spend it. However, we saw Republicans and Democrats really frustrated over two certain proposals that we're going to get into. One would have allowed clerks to process absentee ballots the day before an election. And you know, we spoke to Claire Woodall Volk, who is the uh, executive director of the Milwaukee Elections Commission this week. Despite this not passing, she's still very confident that they can get election results in a little bit earlier than normal big reason behind that is because absentee ballots, at least the amount of them that we saw from 2020, are not quite up to that same number. The other bill we want to talk about, JR, that Democrats and Republicans were frustrated they didn't see come on the floor was a bill that was heavily lobbied to uh, look into transmission lines. Let's start with that one, because looking at that, there was maybe an idea that they would pull that on the floor and try to do it last minute, but we didn't end up seeing it. So this bill got a lot of attention inside the Capitol. Most people at home aren't really paying attention to it. It's about transmission lines, who gets to build them when the work comes in. The big takeaway, though, this week was it underscored tensions in that Senate Republican caucus. So you have Devin Lemahieu, drew leader from Oostburg, who used Democratic votes to pass the Brewer Stadium uh, rehabilitation bill, essentially fund the maintenance bill, to do an alcohol uh, policy overhaul. You don't want to go that well too many times as a leader to use the minority party to pass something. And it underscores this caucus got tensions because of those moves, um, the hard right wing of the caucus wanting to not allow Democrats to have a say in certain bills, and then looking ahead to this fall with this new map where we don't know who's coming back. This caucus could look different. Remember, Republicans had a super majority in the Senate, 22 members, and they've struggled at times to pass big bills with those numbers. If they lose two or three people, how do they pass a budget next year? How do they function as a caucus when you have certain members who vote no more often than not? That's going to be a real challenge. And oh, by the way, these elections will shape who the leaders are next session. It's been an interesting session watching how they've worked together or not worked together. And so it, it changes the kind of structure in the Senate for Republicans who should control the Senate again next fall, or next spring, I'm sorry. But it might be a different look and a different caucus that operates differently because of this dynamic of the really conservative wing and the mostly conservative wing. Right, and also this week we could potentially see what a, a redo of uh, the laws around absentee ballot drop boxes. You may remember in 2022 they were outlawed. They could still be in place outside election clerk's offices, but the ones at the fire station, police station at your local library, those are now illegal. Well, the state Supreme Court, liberals I should say on the court, agreed to revisit that case. And you know, conservative justices were pretty you know, uh, frustrated by this decision. They called it politically motivated um, because usually they don't like to revisit court cases that they already decided to go not too long ago. It telegraphs the court is looking to change the standard put in place in 2020 too, which was there's no law in Wisconsin that supposedly authorizes ballot box drop boxes, therefore they're illegal. The minority did not agree with that position. They are now in the majority as a liberal majority of the state Supreme Court. Likely they're going to change that standard. It's also not the only thing we're going to see this court decide when it comes to election laws. There are big questions about absentee ballot envelopes. You have to have a witness. What's the standard for that witness's address? That can be decided by the courts. Other things could come up. This court will dictate how this election is run this fall in 2024. And if this court changes policies to go back to what we're in place in 2020 and Donald Trump loses Wisconsin again, it would add fuel to fire for conspiracy theorists. If they go back to 2020 standard-wise but Trump wins Wisconsin this fall, then what do those guys say about how elections are run in Wisconsin? It's going to be a fascinating dynamic to watch. But the big thing is this court is going to dictate how we vote in Wisconsin this fall on these kind of smaller issues about drop boxes witness, uh, FC ballot witness uh, addresses, things like that that are important in the administration of the election and can really kind of help determine the outcome. 
Now looking ahead to next week is around the recall uh, of Assembly Speaker Robin Voss. We learned a few days ago that the signatures that were gathered, well, there just wasn't enough valid ones. They turned in thousands, thousands of signatures, but an initial review by the State Elections Commission found that there was a little bit of confusion of the new with the new district lines, which ones were these signatures were placed and other ones outside of Voss's old district, new district. What we want to talk about going forward is that even though this initial review happened, this issue is still something that we're going to keep an eye on for next week. So two things to watch. One, the Elections Commission has, at the commissioners have asked the staff to do a more thorough review. Looking at the ones turned in, they found about 9,000 possibly valid signatures. You need 6,800 and change to recall Robin Voss. The problem is, if you use his old district from 2022, we have enough there. If you use the new district, we have enough there. Which lines are in place? Remember, the state Supreme Court in 2022 in December or sorry, last past December, threw out the map from 2022, so you can't use it anymore, it's unconstitutional. The new map the governor signs, a provision that says, this map takes effect in the fall, August primaries, November general. We are in this no man's land of what lines are in place. So first thing, the Elections Commission has asked State Department of Justice, go to the Supreme Court, ask what lines do we use? Number two, the commission's asked the staff, do a more thorough review, give us a hard number in each option, what's there? It all looks like the question of the court and lines is going to be moot if they're short. But don't forget, these guys gathered more signatures in Robin Boss's old district than he got votes in 2022 GP primary. You can't ignore that. They may have some problems with fraud and duplicate signatures, those kinds of things, so let's not diminish that. But these guys aren't going away. All right. Well, that will do it for this week. Thanks so much for joining us.